How much does it actually cost to travel Vietnam by motorbike? Well, one of the great things about Vietnam is that in many ways, it is as cheap or as expensive as you want it to be. I'm gonna talk about how much it costs to rent a motorbike, the fuel and oil costs for a motorbike, the cost of food, the cost of hotels, and the cost of tours. Finally, I'll talk about finances in the real world. Let's get started. You can be a cheapskate and buy a Honda Win off another traveler. This will cost around $150 up to $300. The people in this price range won't listen or trust me, but I'll give it a go. Your maintenance bill to get across Vietnam in terms of fixing the bike is likely to be $50 to $100. Oil changes on the Honda Win are recommended every 500 kilometers, so this is every two days of driving. With 10 real days of driving between Ho Chi Minh and Hanoi, this is five oil changes. Roughly $5 a change, so that's $25 total. Gas is around $5 a day, regardless of the bike model. So again, with 10 days of driving, this is 50 bucks. Okay, so if you sell the bike for what you bought it for, zero loss on buying and selling. $50 on fixing, $25 on oil, $50 on gas. Total, $125. This doesn't include the time spent losing your holiday to sitting in mechanic shops, the time lost trying to buy and sell the damn thing, the misery in driving a shitty and wobbly bike. Chinese copy that wobbles around and has absolutely no handling and no quality to it. The potential for needing a truck and rescue service for when you break down or the risk of the bike being unfixable. The truth is, the Honda win is a lottery. You can win big, but you can also lose big. Just like the lottery, more people lose than win. They just don't blog about failed holidays because frankly, it's embarrassing. Okay, so the renting of a budget bike from somewhere like Ticket, the Honda Blade. The Honda Blade Semi-Auto is currently priced at $250 for a month. We recommend an oil change every 1,000 kilometers on a journey for most travelers. Currently, we make people pay, although I'm trying to find a way to solve that. Anyway, for now, this is $5 for the oil change. Fixing the bike is free and any other drama is free. So total is $250 on rent, $5 on oil, and the same $50 on gas. Total, $305. There is time saved on picking up the bike, selling the bike, hopefully no mechanics, and definitely no complete holiday disasters. We can move up to the Honda XR, which we currently price at $450 for the month, or the CB500X at $950 for the month. The rest of the costs are basically the same. So that gives you an idea on motorbike rental costs for a month of holiday, including gas, oil, and maintenance. Let's move on to the cost of food. When on the road, breakfast is usually around $5. This can be a bread omelette or a bowl of beef noodles. With the $5, you can also buy a coffee or a Coke or a Red Bull, standard stuff really. Hotels often say free breakfast, but if this is a budget place, then this means one egg and one piece of bread. I don't classify this as breakfast, so I think you still need to budget another whopping $5 for a real breakfast. When on the road, this tends to be beef noodles or similar. So this is $5 with a drink. Dinner, if you go for a Vietnamese style BBQ with a few beers on top, you are looking at around $10 for the nine cents entertainment. If you start going foreign restaurants such as pizza and burgers, this will climb to around $12.50 to $15. Right, so I've painted a pretty cheap picture so far for food. However, in the major cities or tourist towns, you can get top quality and incredibly nice foreign food. Be it burgers or pizzas or whatever takes your fancy, a craft beer can be $5 a beer and a decent burger could be up to 15 bucks. A rack of ribs could set you back $20 to $25. You get the idea, real foreigner food at real foreigner prices. I will tell you from experience that most travelers may set out with the idea of eating Vietnamese food all holiday long. But when it comes down to it, they land themselves in the expensive barbecue rib restaurant with the craft beer. The same goes for the coffee in the morning. You may plan and start your holiday with good intentions of drinking locally made cafe soda all journey long. But when you see that coffee shop selling a latte for five bucks, your head right on in. It's just the way it is. Okay, the cost of hotels. Hotels can be as low as two and a half dollars a night. I struggle to believe it and I've never stayed in one, but I understand they try and make their money on tours and beer. Usually though, for a dorm bed, I think you're looking more in a region of seven to $10. Most private rooms in backpacker style accommodation are around 20 to $25. For a Nyan Yi, which is a guest house on the road, they're around $12.5 a night. For a cheapskate, that's great. 
but for someone wanting a bit more comfort, you should try and avoid the roadside Nyan Yi's. However, if you are doing all of Vietnam, you will land yourself in some $12.5 rooms on several occasions. You can't completely avoid them. If you are traveling with comfort in mind, but on a budget, then to get a decent room and a decent mattress, you will be needing to look into the $25 range. Vietnam is shockingly bad for mattresses. Anything below $25 and you may as well just sleep on the concrete floor. I will one day set up a hotel chain called Hotel Soft Mattress. $25 will normally get you a good mattress, but you can still get unlucky. Move up into the $50 range and you're looking at a hotel with a small buffet breakfast. $75 or more are usually resorts with good buffet breakfast, but perhaps lacking in the gym and are perhaps a little bit rough around the edges. $100 plus and you're looking at a fully fledged golf resort or family entertainment center. Just chill out basically. Homestays, which you should experience at least once on your trip, are around $5 for a mat on the floor. Family tends to charge for dinner and rice wine, maybe in a region of $10. From my experience, they are generous though with food and wine and it is well worth the experience. Okay, so how about the cost of tours? Honestly, I'm a bit out of touch with backpacker prices. COVID's kind of changed that though. But I think your average tour is around $10. They throw you on a bus, give you lunch, and maybe even chuck a beer or two at you. Generally, these tours will dump you in places where markets and salesmen can get easy access to you. And they try and sell you stuff along the way, basically. This doesn't actually make them bad tours. I certainly enjoyed them when I first landed in Vietnam. If you start to pay your way out of budget buses and dodgy markets along the way, then you're probably climbing into the $100 realms for the tour. With it comes a well-trained and professional tour guide. Most sites in Vietnam that you pay to visit, take a random example like the crazy house in Dalat or a cave in Phong Nha, are less than $10 to enter. A proper caving experience in Phong Nha is around $300 for two days, one night. You get the idea. Vietnam is still very cheap for tourism. In fact, it is lacking in quality tourism. I suggest you pay for the good packages if you have the money and actually try to boost the market for real tours in this developing country. So how does this play out in the real world? The low end backpacker on a budget will cut corners on their motorbike rental and accommodation. But in return, they will blow money on beers and budget tours that then require them to buy more beer. And of course, mechanics shop bills. The flash backpacker, for those who don't know, this is a backpack with money, you come to Vietnam with good intentions of eating and drinking locally. But in reality, it takes around two days before you miss the foreigner comforts. From there, you find yourself in $12 to $15 hotels when you are remote. But if the area allows, you'll be jumping straight into that $100 resort with $25 meals, no questions asked. The basic conclusion is that Vietnam is cheap, but probably not as cheap as you think it is. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe.